lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. Paul the Apostle said, I'm watchful, lest after preaching to others, I make myself a castaway. I pray none of us will be a castaway in Jesus' name. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, point number 3 now from verse 14. The usableness, usableness, not just usefulness, somebody is usable. You look at the material, you say, I can use this, the family can use this, God can use this. It is usable. The usableness and character of shining, spotless saints. The usableness and character of shining, spotless saints. Matthew chapter 5. We're reading from verse 14, Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 14. Yeah, the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. Don't hide the light. Don't cover up the light. You're saved, show it. You're sanctified, reveal that. Demonstrate it. You have the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Let's see it. And you have the way with that where you can live to the glory of God. Don't say, I don't want to blow my own trumpet. I don't want to be clever in the public. I don't want to preach. I don't want to do anything less. People look at me and then they say, ah, so you know that. Jesus said, let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see. Let your neighbor see. You're born again. Let your husband see. You're born again. Let your wife see. You're born again. You're a child of God. Let your co-workers see. You're different. You're distinct. And you are sound. Let the people see. Let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify. That's the end. That's the purpose. That's the goal. That's what we're driving at. And glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Our lights will shine. If the light is not shining, it means the light is not there. If it's there, it will shine. The light of the gospel, the light of the word of God. If it's there, it will shine. Let your light so shine that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, who is in heaven. John chapter 8, reading from verse 11. John chapter 8, verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You cannot be sinning and saying, my light is shining. Uh-uh. If you are sinning, if you are living in sin, your light is not shining. Look at verse 12. Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have, tell me, the light of life. If you are born again, you'll demonstrate it. If you are born again, your light will shine. Look at verse 46 of that of uh, chapter 12. Chapter 12, let me back up to verse 36. Chapter 12, verse 36. While ye have light, believe in the light that she may be the children of light. You have light, Christ, the light of the world. 
is close by. This is your chance. When the when tribulation time comes and the church is raptured away, you will not have the hymn so near, and you will not have preaching so clear. It will be a time of darkness, a time of trial, a time of trouble, a time of tribulation. But while ye have the light now, believe in the light that ye may be the children of light. Look at verse 46. I am come a light into the world that whosoever, you see that, that whosoever anywhere, that whosoever young or old, that whosoever man or woman, that whosoever a father or a mother, that whosoever illiterate or educated, whosoever believes on me should not abide in darkness. We will not abide in darkness. I said we will not abide in darkness. Romans chapter 13. In Romans chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 13. And we're reading from verse 11. 13, 11. It says in verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. What it means there is final salvation. The Lord is about to come. And they will be saved out of this unto what generation. And will be saved and removed out of this realm of corruption. Out of this realm of trial, temptation, and trouble. The night is past page. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting, not in drunkenness, not in chambering, not in wantonness, not in strife, not in envying. Strive, conflict, Fighting, violence is of darkness, is of the world, of the corrupt world, of the perverse world. But now let us walk honestly as in the day. Look at verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lost thereon. We're coming to Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Do how many things? Your voice is so dull. Do all things, tell me, and without... Tell me, tell me. You know, there are people, they're going to do something, something good, but you have to debate, dispute, argue, talk like this, talk like that, push, pull. That's not Christianity. It says you come with your heart, you come with your mind, you come with your willingness, and it says you do all things, that's why we're salt. No complaint, no murmuring, no debate, no disputing. Whatever we do, after a lot of debate, after a lot of disputing, after a lot of argument, after a lot of pulling here, pulling there, does not have a reward. We're not doing that out of the depths of our heart, out of the love of God. If we're doing something out of the love of God, do all things without murmurings and disputings, that she may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. 
that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. I pray I will rejoice on that day because I will see you there and you will keep your grace, you'll keep your salvation, you'll keep your conviction, you'll be shining forth as light in your office, in your home, in your community, in your village, and you'll not allow them in the village to bring you to the darkness of idolatry. And when they say, come and have title, connected with darkness, you say, no, I'm a child of light. I'll keep on walking in the light. I'll keep on living in the light. And you will remain, you will abide in the light until the very end in Jesus' name. And then we'll rejoice over you on that day. That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain will not labor in vain over the church in Jesus' name. We're coming to First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, Ye yeah, are all the children of light and children of the day. We're not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to us, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts, chapter 26, reading from verse 18. To open their eyes, that's what the minister is to do. To open their eyes, that's what the house fellowship leader is supposed to do. To open their eyes, that's what every pastor, every overseer is supposed to do. That's how we show light to the people. Bring them to the light of the knowledge of the truth of God. To open their eyes, their eyes of understanding, the eyes of their mind. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. That's what we have to do. Any area of work you are in the church, there are people under your leadership. There are people under your influence, and if they are ignorant, that's darkness, then you will turn them away from the darkness of ignorance, and you turn them to the light of revelation. And it says, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins as you enlighten them. Then they realize what they have gone wrong, and they go to the Lord, and they seek forgiveness from the Lord, and they have forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith in me. If you're a real leader, if you're going to be a rewardable leader, your influence and your teaching and your character and your model, your lifestyle will turn people away from darkness and turn them onto light, will make them have an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith in Christ. We're coming to First Peter chapter 2. Verse 9, First Peter, chapter 2, we're reading from verse 9. But she a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, 
that's what we are supposed to be. Check up your own personal life, your own personal calling, and your own personal demonstration of the grace of God, a chosen generation. Do you remember that you are chosen? And do you know you are chosen for a particular purpose? Do you fulfill the purpose by which you are chosen? Are you chosen to be a part of a holy nation, a royal priesthood? Do you carry royalty and dignity in your calling? Or are you frivolous? Are you careless? Are you like every deacon, Harry? It says that you have royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye would show for, shine for the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're coming to First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1, we're looking at verse 5. First John chapter 1, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all it's saying that if we're children of god there will be godliness without any sin at all there will be grace without disgrace at all there will be good beautiful character without any spot of evil god is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say in testimony, if we say by profession, if we say, and we're so self-confident as we say that, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we we'll lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light every day, and walking means making progress and you're moving, Every step you take is a step in the light. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. We have fellowship one with another. Do you know people that, you know, they say, I know I'm walking in darkness. I know everything is not all right. I know I have sin in my life, but, you know, I need fellowship. I need fellowship. And if you don't give me fellowship, why am I in the church? You are in the church, first of all, to get saved. You are in the church to hear the word of God and apply it to your life. You are in the church to have the grace of God in your life and live in the truth and live in the light. And then as you walk in the light and we walk in the light, then we can walk together in fellowship together. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ a son cleanses us from how many sins? All sins. And as the Lord gives us grace, grants us grace, and we do that on the final day when we leave this world of darkness, we're going to be in the light forever and ever. Look at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And we're reading from verse 40 to verse 43. Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burnt in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Look at verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth. That's for me. I said, this one is for me. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who has ears to hear. Let him hear. 
I have ears to hear. I have heard. And I will live according to the word of God. Look at Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. We're reading from verse 3. Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars. How long? Forever and ever. Come back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I want you to look at that word, so, so. Let your light so shine. Let your light shine. That's good, but it's not good enough. Let your light so shine, so shine before men that they may see your good works. If you're doing it, I'm doing my best, but we cannot see it yet. You need to do more. I'm trying my best. I'm doing my best. I'm going all the way. I stretch myself, overstretch myself, and I'm serving the Lord. We cannot see it yet. If we cannot see it yet, let it so shine that before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Pastor, we tried. You have not tried enough because we have not seen it. We're walking, we've not seen it. We're evangelizing, we've not seen it. We didn't follow up, we've not seen it. We're discipling the people, we've not seen it. We're endeavoring to plant churches, we've not seen it. We have strategy, and we have a lot we have, we're going to do. If we've not seen it, put more effort. Pray for more grace and get deep into what the Lord is calling us to do. Let your light so shine. That means let your light so brighten others. So brighten others. Not only that, let your light so bless others. The people will see your good works, the good you are to them, and the good you are doing unto them. Let your life so influence others that people know that brother has influenced me, that sister has influenced me. Let your life so guide others. Light guides. When there is no light, we don't know where to put our foot. We don't know where to walk. We don't see the road. When the light shines, the light guides us. Let your life so guide others. The people will say, my life would have been ruined. I would have made a mess of my life, of my family, were it not for sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. Let your life so illuminate and lighten others. That's what light does. You are enlightened. And let do it so well that people will say, I was ignorant. I knew nothing. But he came to my rescue, and the light so shone that I'm now enlightened. Let your light be so radiant, so radiant. Not a dull, dim light that doesn't radiate anything, any brightness to anyone. Let your life be so radiant. Let your life be so righteous, so righteous. Not just righteous. I'm righteous. Well, they say they cannot see, but I know I'm righteous. My husband cannot see, but I know I'm righteous. My wife cannot see, but I know I'm righteous. Our people cannot see, but you know, I don't know what they're looking at. They cannot see, but I know I'm righteous. We've not seen it. We've not seen it. Let your light be so righteous. Let your light be so helpful, helpful that you are helping others. They can see your good works is given. 
is praying, is counseling, is up and down, is evangelizing. Let your life be so helpful. Let your life be so revealing. Light reveals. It's not that, you know, somebody is there is covering up a lot of things in the house fellowship. They are covering up a lot of things in their local church. They are covering up a lot of corruption, a lot of immorality. They are covering up. They are not here in my mouth. They are not here from my mouth. Your life is not revealing. Light will expose. Light will reveal. Let your light be so revealing that people will say he's surprised. It doesn't cover anything. It doesn't get involved. Or the people that are doing evil are cover you up. I'll cover you up with hypocrisy and lying and deception. Let your life so convict others. The way you live, you know, they are close to you, they are friendly to you, but you know, when they begin to do things, I'm not part of that, I'm not going to have hands in that. Your light is shining then. Let your life so convict others. Let your life so minister grace to others. That's how we shine. The light is shining. And because of that, you are revealing. Because of that, you are convicting. Because of that, you are combating. Because of that, you are ministering grace unto them. Let your life so glorify God, not self. Let your life so glorify God that people will see. You know what I know about that brother? He never does anything that he imagines will not glorify God. Rather than doing anything that will not glorify God, he will sit back, he will keep quiet, he'll be praying, he'll be meditating, he'll be reading his Bible. He never gets involved with anything that will not glorify God. Let your life so glorify God, not self, that saints and sinners may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I pray your light will shine. And I pray your light will so shine. It will shine brighter and brighter unto the glorious day in Jesus' name. Let your light so shine. Will you allow your light to shine? I said, will you allow your light to shine? Let your light so shine before men, not behind men where they cannot see. Before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Your heavenly Father, your merciful Father, your saving Father, your sanctifying Father, your heavenly Father will then be glorified. Great will be your reward in Jesus' name. Let the church shout, Amen. Amen. Rise up now and tell the Lord and say, Lord, I've heard your word. I'm going to pray on this. My light will shine. I will be salt. I'll be light, and my light will shine, and my life will season others, switch others, help others to be what they ought to be. Hallelujah, the Lord has conquered the world and gave us victory, 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 hallelujah, we are victorious, yes, we are victorious, glory be to God who has given us victory, victory, we are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory, victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who has given us victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. 
victorious. Glory be to God. He who has given us victory, victory. We are victorious. Yes, we are victorious. Glory be to God who gave us that victory. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what they say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today, today. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what they say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same today. The power, the power, the Pentecostal power is just the same today. No matter what they say, the power, the power, the Pentecostal power, it is just the same Today, you today, answer your prayers today, and give you beyond your prayers in Jesus' name. Wellness, everybody shout wellness. It will be well with your soul. Well with your spirit. Well with your body. Well with your family. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. Everybody sing it is well. It is well. Sing it with a good voice. It is well with my soul. It is well Sing it for the last time. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this day. Beautiful day and great day. A day of great expectation. And we're asking, O oh Lord, that the expectation of your people will not be cut short in Jesus' name. Fulfill their desires. Answer their prayers. Touch and transform every life. And do good in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, where there is sickness, let there be healing. Where there is any disturbance, O oh Lord, let there be calm. And when there is any fear, Lord, I pray, you clear all the fears away in Jesus' name. Your people will be more than conquerors. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Consider we're coming to Romans chapter 8. And we're looking at verse 11. We're looking at the resurrection power of Christ. And how that impacts the wellness of the body. The healing of the body. The health of the body. The resurrection power and the wellness. Wellness 
in his resurrection power. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the spirit of him, the spirit of God, the spirit of resurrection that raised up Jesus, if he dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also, also, as he did on that resurrection day, he will also, as he did to Christ and he raised him up, he will also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. There's a lot there. It says there is power, the power of the spirit and the power of resurrection. It raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. And everything that is dead or dying in your body will be quickened today in Jesus' name. Wellness, healing, health, soundness in his resurrection power. The three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise of wellness and health. The promise of wellness and health. Point number two. The prayer for wellness and healing. Healing is there. Available for you, available for me. And we pray. And as we pray, God answers our prayers. And you are healed in Jesus' name. The prayer for wellness and healing. Number three, the preservation of wellness through holiness. How do you preserve your healing? How do you preserve your wellness? How do you preserve the miracle that God does in your life? Through a holy life, holy attitude, and holy disposition, holy nature, and a life of holiness, the preservation of wellness through holiness. Number one is the promise. The promise is yours. It will be fulfilled. It will set you free. From every sickness, it will set you free from any predicament in your life in Jesus' name. Let's look at the promise now. Number one, the promise of wellness and health. We're looking at Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. Look at the promise now. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. It tells us here the condition of fulfillment for the promise. It says, if you will hearken to the voice of the word of the Lord, if you will do that diligently, and you will not allow anything to take the word away from your heart. Every word he has spoken to us, the word of salvation, the word of repentance and the word of faith in Christ, having faith in the Lord, and the word of restoration, restitution, and the word of renewal, the word of revival, if you will hack into the voice of the Lord your God. And you will do exactly as he has said. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon you. I claim that. I said, I claim that. The disease of Egypt will not be upon your life in Jesus' name. And he said, I am, I am, I am, not I was, not I will be, but I am, even at the present time, I am the Lord that he let thee. That's the promise he gave to the children of Israel, and that's the promise he's giving to every one of us. Isaiah chapter 53. I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 53, we're looking at verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God 
and afflicted is looking forward to when Christ will die on the cross of Calvary. And he says the purpose is that he will be wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And tell me what you find there. And with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes, the stripes of suffering, the stripes of agony, and the stripes of punishment laid upon him. With those stripes, I am healed. I am healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 30. And I'm reading from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. Let me hear his thunderous amen. He will do it. Nothing can stop him. Satan cannot stop him. Evil spirit cannot stop him. The curse of men or women cannot stop him. Anything that happened in the past cannot stop him. Anything around you there cannot stop him. He says, I will, for I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wants. Internal wants, he will heal. External wounds, he will heal. Any kind of uh, cancerous wound, he will heal. He says, I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. But thank God, your healing time has now come. Jeremiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 6. Behold, I will bring it health and cure. There's no incurable disease here. The Lord said every mountain he will move, every sickness he will heal, every disease he will take away. It says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure. I will cure them. I will cure them. Them who? Them where? Them over there? Them in front of me? Them on that other side? I will kill them. I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. The time is getting near. Healing is running after you. Deliverance is looking for where you're sitting or standing. It is coming. I said it is coming. Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many, many, Many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word. With his what? He cast out the spirits, tell me with what? With his word. That word is coming to you today. And he healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 24. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 24. Who is own self? That's Christ. Who is own self? Not an angel. Who is his own self, not a religious man, but Christ himself, who is his own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes 
ye were healed. You have been healed. It's now for you to rise and claim that healing is coming your way. Point number two, the prayer for wellness and healing. The prayer for wellness and healing. The Lord expects us to pray and to seek his face so that what he has promised by prayer and faith we claim. Look at Psalm 107. Psalm 107. I'm reading from verse 17. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Maybe you've been wondering why this, why that in your life? Why this in your body? If you check up very well and you dig deep very well to the lifestyle you are leading, you might find out that iniquities abound. You might find out that carelessness, even sometimes is hygienic carelessness, that we don't take care very well. And because of that, afflictions come. Those afflictions, the Lord will take away today. Their soul abhors all manner of meat. So seek, they lose appetite, and they draw near to the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. That means they pray, and the Lord will take away all those infirmities in Jesus' name. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, in their trial, in their affliction, in their sickness, and the Lord saveth them out of their distresses. How did he do that? Verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He did it before and he says, I am God. I change not. His power has not changed. His compassion has not changed. And his manifestation of majestic miracles that has not changed numbers chapter 21 in numbers chapter 21 reading from verse 4 and he journeyed from mount or by the way of the red sea to compass the land of edom and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way you see there are many people that instead of looking at Christ and looking at the Lord, instead of looking at the word of God and the commandments of God, they're looking at the way. They're looking at the roughness of the road. And they're looking at the slope of the mountain, of the, of the way they ought to go. And because of that, they're discouraged. And discouragement pushed them to do something Unwholesome, verse 5, and the people speak against God. Can you imagine? They had done a lot in their lives, and they had got them through quite a lot of dangers, diseases, and difficulties. And now they speak against God and against Moses. Think about that. God in heaven had done what no one could do for them. Man on earth, Moses, had done what no other person on earth had done for them. And in the time of discouragement, they spoke against God in heaven and they spoke against Moses on earth. Wherefore, have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread Neither is there any water. Neither is there any water. Look at these people. These were the people. The Lord told Moses to strike the rock before this time. 
and that water will come out. And water came out for them out of the rock two times. And now they're saying there's no water, not any water at all. And our soul loosed this light bread, the bread from heaven. The Lord sent furry serpents among the people. That's because of their sin, the sin of their tongue. And they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. Watch over your tongue, you will not die prematurely. Words of anger, words of fretting, words of worry, words of anxiety, words of slander, words of abuse, words of strife, they bring problems upon our lives. Whether those words are spoken by ministers or spoken by members, whether they are spoken by people who are high in authority or they are spoken by people who are low in recognition. Words of anger and words of anxiety bring problems. Look at verse 6. And the Lord said, very serpents among the people. And they beat the people and much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses and they said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord. Confession will bring kill. I said, Confession will bring kill. They said, They have spoken against the Lord and against thee. This was not just confession, it was restitution. You see, in our lives, we shouldn't bottle our grief and our guilt. In our lives, we shouldn't hide our guilt. We shouldn't hide the condemnation. Your conscience tells you that your tongue has led you astray. Your life and manner of life has led you astray. You repent and you do the works meet for repentance. You make restitution, and it says, pray unto the Lord for us. They were now asking for prayer. As you ask him for prayer, and prayers are made, they will touch your life. It will heal your soul. It will heal your spirit. It will heal your body. That have any amen around the corner there? Pray that you take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a furry serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that, tell me, that how many people? How many people today that everyone that is speaking, when he looketh upon it, shall live? And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, any man, I'm looking at you. Any man. I want to check up who is the any man there. Any man. Any man. The low and the high. The newcomer and the old timers. The men and the women. The young and the old. If the serpent had beaten any man, a walker, a member. If the serpent had beaten any man full time, part time, when he beheld the serpent of brass, tell me, tell me, you will live. I said you will live. He lived. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 14. Jeremiah. Chapter 17, verse 14. 
Here is the prayer, the prayer for wellness, the prayer for healing. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. To say how simple the prayer is, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. You'll praise God. You will testify. The Lord will touch you and roll all those problems away in answer to your prayer, and you will praise the Lord in Jesus' name. In James chapter 5, James chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. That's an emblem of the Holy Spirit. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It never fails. The prayer of faith never fails. It will not fail in your life. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they, those sins, shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. He's still telling us that righteousness is the very foundation of wellness. You want to be healed, you want to be well, and you want to remain well, remain healthy. It says, if your conscience convicts you, of any offense, small or great, against your wife, against your husband, against a member of the church, against a co-worker, against your company, if the Spirit of God convicts you of any offense, of anything you shouldn't have done, against your place of work, you will confess your faults to the appropriate authority there. And then pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Somebody tell me out aloud. Availeth much. It will avail in Jesus' name. Point number three now. The preservation of wellness through holiness. The preservation of wellness, of soundness, of health, through holiness. We're coming back to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26 again. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. And give ear, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Look at that verse very well. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and then you will do what is right in his sight. What's that? That's holiness. Holding on to his word. Holding on to his word. When you do that, and you say, that word has been spoken. I will not let that word go. And you hold fast to his word. Healing will come to you through the word. I can't hear my people say amen. amen. Holding on to his word. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son... 
attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Hold on to that word. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Look at this. For they, the words, are life unto those. door of the oppressed. We're looking at Isaiah 